to cut an apple. Oh, that's not an apple. What is that? A banana. A banana. We're going to cut the apple, the, uh, the banana, with the laser. You've seen my laser before. You push this little button and that red spot comes out. Well, there's a line coming out of there called a laser. It goes all the way up. With this laser, I can cut right through the banana without cutting the skin. You want to watch me cut it? Ready? Did you see it cut the banana? Yeah, there's an old banana here. Let's see if it cut the banana. We will take this, peel the top back. Are you ready? Yes. We will peel the banana back, the peeling. And look at that. It cut the banana right in four pieces, burned it right in half. There's one. There's one. And there's one. We cut the banana. Oh, there's another cut. Man, we really cut that banana to pieces, didn't we? Burned it right in half. How would you like to learn how to do that trick? Whoa. All right. Well, if you'd like to cut the banana with a laser or with a flashlight or with an imaginary laser, I can actually cut it with my finger, just pointing at it, if you know how to do the magic trick. What I did, you take a needle, and you poke it into the banana right on top of one of these bumps. On the, the bananas have these ridges on them, these little bumps. I'm going to poke the needle right through that bump. And I'm going to swing the needle back and forth. So the needle is cutting the banana inside. Now the banana is already cut right through there where that little hole was where I poked the needle. Push the needle in and swing it back and forth, but I didn't cut the skin. Then I pretend like I'm going to cut it with my laser or with my finger. I can go whoosh and say, see, we just cut the banana. And the kids all think, no, he didn't cut the banana. I cut it earlier. I'll just cut the top off this banana and see. If we peel it back, we will find the banana has already been cut inside. And you can tell them it was cut with your finger, but really, you cut it with the needle. How do you like that trick? That's one you could do at home, and your brothers would love it, wouldn't they? Well, Miss Stephanie, I would like to show you my magic quarter. Take a look at that quarter. See if you see anything unusual about it. Would you say that's an ordinary quarter? Yes. Okay, put it on my hand with the head side up. Now, what side is this? The head. This is head. Can you flip it over? What side is this? The head. Flip it over. What side is this? The head. The head. I thought you said there was tails on the other side. This is heads and this is... Oh, wait a minute. This is heads and this is heads. Right? Now hold your hand out like that. This is heads and this is heads. Now you try it. Flip. Tails. You broke it. No, no. Now watch carefully here. This is heads and this is heads and this is heads. Now, if you have two quarters, we have one is heads, this one is heads, and this one is heads, right? When I flip them over, one is heads and one is tails. <laughs> heads and tails. Cool. Would you like to learn how to do that trick? All right, pay attention. You take an ordinary quarter. I put it on my hand closest to my little finger. If I put it over in the middle, see, when I turn my hand over, my hand is going to roll right over the top of the quarter. I put this hand down lower, and I pull this hand so fast, it slaps it straight down, and it never, the quarter never does turn. So this is on heads on this side by my little finger. If I put this one on the other side, it's got the red letters on there, this one will flip over. See those red letters on there? Yeah. That's just somebody got some paint on this quarter, it doesn't matter. Now this one will flip over and this one won't, because I'm going to twist my hand in the middle. And i got to have my other hand down below, so when I twist it in the middle, this one did not flip, and the one with the red letters did flip. It takes a little practice, and you can learn how to do the two-headed quarter. If you want them both to stay heads, I put them both on the side by my little finger. Now they're both heads, both heads, both tails, and one of each. Kids are amazed by that one.
Stephanie, how many pennies are around this table? Six. Six pennies. There are four pennies in this row and three pennies in this row. I would like you to make four pennies in both rows at the same time without adding any more pennies. Hmm, how can we put four pennies in both rows? There's four here and three here. Or I can move this one and have four and three. Hmm, I would like to have four and four. You know, sometimes in life, it's just hard for us to figure out how God is going to supply our needs. We say, God, I don't have enough money to go around. And oftentimes, we're not thinking of all the different ways God can do things. Watch this. I'm going to take this penny right here and put it on top. How many pennies in this row? Two. No, there's two here. Three, four. Oh. And four in this row. We made four in both rows. Sometimes you just got to say, Lord, you're going to have to show me some different way to fix this problem because we don't have enough money to go around. <laughs> Let me show you one more trick with pennies. Okay, here I have, uh, we're going to get a bunch of pennies. Heads, tails, heads. Oop. Tails, heads, tails. And heads, tails, heads. And tails, heads, Tails. Now these pennies are all mixed up. Heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails. What I'm supposed to do here, I'm only going to touch one penny. Just one penny. But I'm going to fix every one of these rows where it's either all heads or all tails. We can fix all of the rows only touching one penny. A lot of times we get ourselves locked into a way of looking at things. and That's the way we've always done it. Sometimes you need to say, maybe there's a whole new way to do things. Watch this. I'm going to touch one penny right here. I'm only touching one penny, and I fixed all the rows. All heads, all tails, all heads, all tails. One. Only touching one. See? That's pretty neat. <laughs> I'm about to show you the scientific way to shoot a rubber band. Would you like to learn how to shoot a rubber band? The scientific way? We're going to see how far we can shoot this rubber band. Now, here's what most kids don't know. See, they don't study science enough. They don't know how to shoot a rubber band the real way. If you take a rubber band and put it on the tip of your finger and pull it back and shoot it, it'll fly pretty far. But if you want it to fly twice as far, you have to learn the scientific secret to shooting rubber bands. And I do this everywhere when I go to churches. I say, boys and girls, I'm going to show you the scientific way to shoot a rubber band. I will take one side of the rubber band and I will write on here, this is the flesh. And on the other side, I'm going to write the spirit. See, the Bible says we're supposed to walk in the spirit. We're not supposed to be led by the flesh. We're supposed to let the spirit lead us, the spirit of God. So one side is the flesh and one side is the spirit. If you put both sides stretched the same, when it flies through the air, they'll be flopping back and forth. And they're fighting against each other all the time. And so you lose all your speed. It won't go very far. But the secret to going fast is, before I stretch it back, I grab most of it on this side. Now this is tight. Listen to it. And this is loose. Now when it flies through the air, three times farther than most people can shoot a rubber band. That's how you... Shoot a rubber band the high speed scientific way. All right? For our next magic trick, Stephanie, we are going to actually create some thick water.